Thank you. Seats, please. Council members, we're about to start. We're going to ask the honor guard to proceed into the chamber. Right after they come in, we'll have the swear pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance up to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for one stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take a roll call, please. Councilor Cooper. Here. Councilor Taneri Garcia. Present. Councilor Robinson. Here. Councilor Taylor. Here. Councilor Lopez. Here. Councilor Vega Maldonado. Councilor Brown. Present. Councilor Vido. Present. Councilor De Jesus. Present. Councilor Judy Garcia. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight members present have a quorum. Mr. Chairman, first order of business is the swearing in ceremony of newly appointed chief. Swearing in. Yes. I'm going to introduce the city manager. I'd like to introduce the city manager, come up, do a few introductions, and then I'll ask that the city come and do the swearing in service. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Council President Brown. Uh, welcome everyone to this very exciting uh, moment here in the city of Chelsea. Um, I have to say I've been here seven and a half years and I never had the pleasure of swearing in a police chief, so I'm really as excited tonight as anyone else here in this room. Uh, excited and uh, I feel it's a rewarding moment because we are about to elevate and promote someone who's truly deserving of uh, this honor. Um, before I start, I just do want to recognize some of our distinguished guests here uh, from uh, the uh, Chelsea District Court. Uh, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to miss someone because I was just trying to catch people as they walked in, so I apologize in advance if I miss you. Uh, we're grateful for the presence of so many uh, representatives of the court system here in Chelsea, but first and foremost, I want to uh, acknowledge the first justice of the Chelsea District Court, Matthew Mashera. Thank you, Judge, for coming. Uh, Carmen Gomez is here. She is the Regional Supervisor for Mass Probation Services. Thank you, Carmen. Our newly elevated first chief probation officer, Jessica Ayavana, is here. Uh, and uh, the chief court officer, Brian Nichols, is also here in attendance. I know that uh, Jimmy Dwyer, also assistant court uh, magistrate, is here. I appreciate that very much. If I missed other court magistrates, I do apologize. Again, we're very grateful. And I, I see a very special guest in the audience, and I know the chief is very uh, thrilled to have him here is uh, Suffolk County District Attorney Kevin Hayden. And of course, uh, I also see uh, uh, Chief Houghton's predecessor, longtime chief of the Chelsea Police Department, now U.S. Marshal Brian Kai. So thank you so much, Brian, for coming to this. Uh, just a few things about uh, Chief Houghton. Uh, Chief uh, Houghton was appointed to the uh, Chelsea Police Department back in 1986, and he quickly worked his way 
through the ranks, becoming a captain in 2002. Uh, in 2007, as a captain, he was appointed to be the head of the Criminal Investigation Division, as well as the Public Information Officer for the Chelsea Police Department. And he held those two positions for the entire remaining time that he was a captain in the ranks and did an outstanding job at that. Uh, in addition to that service, he, didn't, uh, he performed just about every possible job there in the department. He did grant writing, he lectured, not only in Massachusetts, but throughout the United States and in Canada. He served on a gubernatorial commission for public safety. Uh, he's really just uh, had a myriad of uh, successful uh, assignments for the Chelsea Police Department in his long uh, career. In addition, he is uh, academically uh, well-versed. He has a master's degree from Anna Marie College and is a graduate of the FBI Academy in uh, Quantico, Virginia. Uh, I would say even though, Chief, you have big shoes to fill, uh, uh, filling the, uh, the great job or succeeding uh, the post uh, that uh, Chief Kais had filled so admirably for so many years, I have no doubt that quickly you're going to establish your own uh, level of uh, uh, excellent service for the Chelsea Police Department. I will tell you that uh, in the short time that uh, Keith Houghton has been chief, obviously this is the official ceremony, but he was sworn in informally in my office a bit ago. Uh, I have been tremendously impressed by the work that you've done in this short period, and I can say from everyone I've heard from who has interacted with you, the feeling there is mutual. So without further ado, Chief, I invite you up. I would also like to invite the family members who are going to be part of the pinning ceremony, and the person who is going to be doing the actual pinning of the badge will be uh, Chief Houghton's son, Brennan Houghton. Come up and just gonna say a few words. Thank you. You may have your seats, please. Just again, wanted to recognize a few more dignitaries just in the house. Madam Superintendent of Schools, thank you for being here. Fire Chief, thank you for being here. I see former City Councilor Stan Tweezy, thank you for being here. Um, any other elected officials, the former elected officials. But I think all of the family members, the friends, the police department, all of your family members here for being here for this so special occasion. And we're so proud to be a part of this um, big celebration for our good friend and our new chief of police. And we would like you to give us your remarks. Good evening. Thank you for the kind words, uh, Mr. Ambrosino. To say that I am humbled by your sentiments is an understatement. Thank you for your confidence in me and your support. I am grateful for our partnership. Council President Brown, distinguished city councilors, 
city government officials, my fellow offices, colleagues, ladies, gentlemen, and the great people of this community, good evening and welcome. A little about me. I am a son of this community. I was raised here, educated here, played here, worshiped here, and for over 36 years, I have worked here as a proud officer of the Chelsea Police Department. I learned quite a bit growing up here in Chelsea. It is true what they say, it really does take a village. A village of extraordinary individuals, and I have been blessed with their guidance and kindness over the years, as it exposed me to opportunities, leading me right here to stand before you tonight as chief. I have nothing but gratitude and admiration for you all. And to a city that has given me so much, it is my turn to give back. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brian Kais left the police department in a solid state and set us up with tremendous success. Brian, you are a terrific boss. I appreciate all the support. I am proud to call you my friend, and I wish you the best as United States Marshal for the District of Massachusetts. Thank you so much, Brian, for everything. <laughs> Despite our progress, we must not rest on our laurels. Community safety is always fluid. We must be alert and will adapt to ever-changing community conditions. This takes all of us, not just the police, but again, the village. It is an all-inclusive community effort. It takes professional commitment to constituents in providing exceptional community service, resounding the call that we app all public servants every single day. It takes leveraging relationships with appointed and elected officials, department heads, federal, state, and local agencies, community stakeholders, businesses, our clergy, and residents to establish common goals. It takes the attention of our entire community to, to address the continuing opioid epidemic, the evolving mental health crisis, domestic violence, the harm caused by the pandemic, and a host of other challenges. Only by working as a team and in unison will we be successful. It takes my commitment as chief pledging to you that all Chelsea police officers are community service officers first. It takes all of us. The role of police chief, unlike most in public service, is unlike most in public service because it's interconnected with every aspect of government. It also requires in-depth comprehension of the inner workings of our neighborhoods, businesses, civic groups, and community organizations. It is a personal education of sorts attained by having been ingrained in the hands-on day-to-day experiences here. That is life in Chelsea. With that in mind, I share my basic philosophy regarding policing service. It's known simply by an acronym FACT, F-A-C-T. We are all fair, accountable, compassionate, and transparent in everything we do. We will continue to make youth our priority. Currently, 25% of Chelsea's population is under age 18. This is Chelsea's future. Their safety, well-being, and ability to thrive should be vital areas of focus encompassing the entire community. It is imperative to make resources constantly available to them again. Again, it takes a village. I believe in a policy of an engagement over enforcement. That philosophy will be a connection that can follow a, a police officer and a child into adulthood. Officers will work to establish a consistent and approachable presence on the streets, in the schools, to foster and build relationships with youth from the earliest ages possible, creating a foundation of trust and a genuine rapport that can last a lifetime. However, we must remain diligent, aware, and prepared to com combat any uptick in gang and youth violence across the region. Chelsea is not immune to the potential impact of gun and gang violence. In that vein, we strive to lead proactive, coordinated efforts with federal, state, and local partners to intervene by continuing, continuing to educate ourselves in understanding the science behind the violence through our collaboration with our esteemed colleagues at ROCA. 
We will continue to champion our active role as community protectors of those challenged with substance abuse and mental health issues. When I authored the first, very first grant that formulated the initial Chelsea Hub way back in 2009, I was educated on the importance of the need of a holistic programming to address issues. I have been an advocate ever since. Named the hidden casualty of the pandemic, addiction is an ongoing battle. The Center for Disease Control has forecasted an increase in cases of those who struggle. We are compelled to recognize and prepare for the imminent delayed effects of this increase, making a demand for resources to aid those seeking a track to recovery a challenge. Too many lives have been lost. The hub in our work with the North Suffolk Mental Health uh, Group is needed now more than ever. I am committed in supporting Chelsea's core nonprofit organizations like the Collaborative, CAPIC, and so many selfless others that are the cornerstone of humanitarian aid to the majority of our underestimated, underserved, and most vulnerable population. They have helped us identify the missing links in our community safety strategy and legitimize policing with, and to help us legitimize policing within the silent population. We cannot do it without them. I look forward to embarking on new programming to close gaps in service and promote positive and trusted dialogue with our ever-changing community. We also must focus on each of Chelsea's neighborhoods. Each has unique characteristics. Sometimes those come with complex problems that call for the officer to understand the district personally. Given that expectation, I am recommitting officers back to each neighborhood and expanding the successful model of the downtown task force, downtown task force to a citywide initiative. Just remember, all Chelsea offices are community service offices. To the command staff and supervisory offices of the Chelsea Police Department, many have retired over the last two years and hundreds of years of combined supervisory experience left the station with them. As the next wave of officers step up, they will lack the gap in institutional knowledge that cannot be learned from any book, but from you. Mentorship, supervision, and, and integrity will need to be imparted. We are only good as those we have trained. This is your time to emerge as leaders, and I empower you to shape the future of our organization. To our patrol officers, you are tasked with performing many demanding responsibilities outside of traditional law enforcement. You are expected to make difficult decisions and you are judged on those moments. It is not easy. I will do all that I can to see that you are properly trained, equipped, supervised, and supported. I believe in you. I know the community believes in you. I pledge also to establish a fair process to maximize talent in our culturally diverse workforce, preparing you for positions in specialized roles and as instructors. I will create opportunities to further equity and inclusion in the department that reflect the demographic of this community. However, that commitment goes both ways. I expect in return that you act with dignity, moral soundness, and that you are fair, accountable, compassionate, and transparent to the community you serve, to your fellow officers, and most importantly, to yourselves, on the job and off. To my civilian staff, what you do every day impacts every single officer, and you all do it with such professional, professionalism and attention to detail that we actually all look forward to coming to the station every day. Your dedication helps us all be better officers, so thank you. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge, acknowledge the command staff that I have been honored to serve with for so many years. Captain Thomas Dunn whose leadership in developing policy and programming demonstrates our commitment in delivering exemplary police service to the community every day. Captain David Batchelor, who will be retiring at the end of this month, will be missed. However, we will be lucky as he only moves down the street to embark on a new career with ROCA. We will continue to tap into his vast knowledge on training and ROCA's always innovative programming. And Captain Bill Dana, who will spearhead our back to the neighborhood initiatives. His hands-on approach and commitment, commitment to officer-initiated neighborhood patrols will enhance neighborhood safety. I also want to thank my family and friends for being here tonight to share this memory with me. First of all, I want to acknowledge my mother. I guess you could call, she could hold the title of patron saint of first responders in the city. She has lived and witnessed her father-in-law, 
my father, two brothers, Robert and Carlo, are here tonight, all answer the call to the Chelsea Fire Department. If you count my years of police service, that is over 175 years of dedicated public service to the city. I want to thank my sisters Laurie, Susan, and Karen, and Lisa, who are here tonight. Some may say they made a much wiser decision as they all chose other career paths. I guess at this point I have to mention my, my childhood friend Tim Broman, who embarked on this police journey, journey with me back 36 years ago. He has always been part of the Houghton family. You probably never heard of that because we definitely don't advertise it. Sorry, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank my two wonderful children, Brennan and Bailey. I have been lucky to witness and share so many great moments and memories with you throughout your lives. The last time you were both here in this chamber was over 20 years ago when Bailey, you were only two, and Brennan was only five when I was promoted to captain. I am just so glad that I get to cherish something that we both can remember together. Then there's Rosemary. I am blessed to have a best friend, mentor, partner that's always there for me. She is my true unsung hero. She never takes credit for anything and has done all the process for me to, to go through this cheese process. Rosemary, you are truly the, pers the reason why I'm here tonight. Once again, I thank you for your confidence in me, and I look forward to the next era of policing in our community. Thank you all so much. Okay, and I want to thank everyone for being here tonight and also want to say hello and also announce that our former school committee member, Jimmy Dwyer, a former um, school committee member, now clerk of uh, magistrate of his courts in Chelsea. Thank you all for being here to make this a special night for Chief Houghton, and we wish you all safety on your way home. We're going to take a five-minute recess so you can take pictures with your family and your friends out in the podium. Get ready to go home. Uh oh. So we are now at, we've had the pledge calling, we're going to do the swearing in, we're going to do the resolutions, then we're going to do a public hearing. We don't have a public hearing tonight, do we? No. Okay. Oh. Yo, you know what? We got someone that's going to speak. We got the big TV in the way. They can use that microphone. Okay. Okay. okay.
30 seconds, counselors. Counselors in the back. 30 seconds, we're gonna resume. Get those notes I gave you too for the end. Yeah, I got those. Sorry. That was my first one, man. Okay. Can, should I close the door? Can I close the door? Okay, Mr. Clerk, we start with the next order of business, please. Uh, Memorial Salvatore Resolution. Okay. We have a resolution introduced by Councilor Robinson and all members of the City Council. Whereas Al Ewing started at Chelsea Housing Authority as Executive Director on December 18, 2000, whereas Al has been married to his wife, Kathy, for 48 years and he has four children, three boys and a daughter, and four grandchildren. Whereas CHA Leased Housing Department oversees four housing authority choice voucher programs, Chagas, Reading, Lexington, and Amesbury. And whereas runs two self-sufficiently programs, one for state and one for federal public housing and Section 8 participants. Whereas in 2016, the Chelsea Housing Authority was awarded DHCD's Mod Phase Grant and in 2022, the Chelsea Housing Authority completed the project that was Union Park Development. State elderly disabled residents worth over seven million to renovate the 56 units and a community room. And whereas PEHO redevelopment project was awarded in 2016 and groundbreaking in 2022 total $155 million project. Whereas the Housing Authority residents always believed in Al and his team. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Chelsea City Council, wish to go on record as to recognize the work of the, as executive director for the City of Chelsea Housing Authority. We congratulate you and wish you many years of happiness and good health upon your retirement. What's the will of the uh, adopt this unanimously on the suspension? Just briefly, um, they had a ceremony for him last suspension. Thursday okay. evening at the um, Yacht Club, that one small gathering of his friends. So. It turned out to be very nice. Councilor Vito. Um, full disclosure, my mother works at Chelsea Housing, has worked there for, for many years. And I've gotten to see a lot of the different directors growing up. Um, and Al was someone that was really, when I was president of this council, he always kept in touch, always kept us updated and abreast of what was going on in the community. On a personal level, he had family members that had suffered from the same autoimmune condition that I, and he always reached out, made sure that I was okay, always told me to prioritize my health, and, and always served as like a really positive mentor in the community. So it's a big loss for us. I, I do feel confident that there are, there are people that can step into those shoes, but it, it, he really did pave the way. And I just really wanted to acknowledge him for all his work, for his heart, his compassion, and I'm hoping that he takes his own advice and during his retirement rests and lives life as he's always advised me to. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Councilor? Recupero. Uh, the city, um, the housing authority will miss Mr. L. Ewan. He was a great person. He is a great person. I hope him all the luck in retirement and enjoys himself. While he was here, he was a perfect person to run the housing authority. I had the pleasure of knowing him for all these years and it's an honor to said that I know Mr. Ewan and good luck in your retirement. Enjoy the rest of your life. Councilor Taylor. So I just want to echo uh, what 
my fellow counselors have already said, uh, Al Ewing is a great guy, and I wish him all the luck in retirement, and I'm happy to have known him, and he was a, he's, uh, like Councillor Vito said, it's a great loss for the city. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll get through, but, uh, but uh, very sad to see him go. He's a great guy, and Al, good luck. We have Councillor DeJesus. Fellow counselors, I, I wish Al the best of luck, and you know I have worked alongside him, um, and sometimes on the other side, right? <laughs> because as a tenant organizer, <laughs> um, I can't, you know, you, you, you can't dismiss the fact that many times um, uh, we've we've sort of met each other on different sides of the table. But all throughout this experience, he has Counselor. just been nothing but tirelessly working. Um, for the betterment of, of the families. And I think that this last project that we worked on together um, at the Central Ave development, um, the redevelopment project, I think that that is going to be one of the greatest things that Chelsea um, has seen. And it's really going to pilot not just Chelsea, but the state. And so I am extremely grateful for the work that he has done. Um, and I wish him, wish him the best of luck. If I may, from Chair, just very briefly, any objections? Thank you, sir, Councillor. So I just want to wish him very well in his um, retirement and his health, um, continuing speed health and fun and enjoyment of the rest of his retirement. And as it all has been said, he's done a remarkable job um, with our housing authority and he leaves us in good shape as some of the councils have mentioned with qualified folks. So I look forward to um, working continuously with the housing authority um, as a city councilor. Okay, next order of business, Ms. Quick. Uh, public speaking, we have no public hearing. No public hearing, public speaking. Anyone like to speak? Unfortunately, our mic is covered. If you don't mind, we'll ask you to stand here. Please state your name and your address. And you have four. I was thinking that I can't hear. Okay. Um, my name is Sarah Neville and I live at 40 Eleanor Street. I'm sorry, what was your first name? Sarah Neville. Sarah. And I live at 40, 40 Eleanor, Eleanor Street. Eleanor. Thank you. I'm coming here today to speak about the importance of transparency in city government. Um, last week, despite the city solicitor making it clear that it was illegal to do so, and making it clear that you know the appointment process for the city council vacancy needed to be completely transparent and open, um, the city council made a deliberate decision to keep their ballots for the appointment secret. After Councillor Vidot mentioned that this was not allowed, the City Council decided to vote on the matter, which was not up for debate because it was d illegal to do so, and it was a matter of the law. And Councillors Judith Garcia, Tenayde Garcia, Melinda Vega, Cal uh, Calvin Brown, and Noria Liz de Jesus voted against putting their names on their ballots where they ranked the City Council candidates. My husband, Roberto Jimenez Rivera, filed a complaint about this illegal action because like me, he cares a lot about transparency in government. Why am I coming here to rehash all of this, which we already know what happened last week here in this room? Because this is a larger issue than just one illegal action that was taken. The subcommittee where this happened was not recorded, so the people who are listening to this meeting right now here at home weren't able to see what happened or hear the discussion, and they wouldn't know how people voted on that matter unless they went and looked up the notes, which are hard to find anyway. So this is the crux of what I want to talk about today. Even for someone who's got a lot of education, a lot of time, a lot of privilege, it's really hard to figure out what's happening in city council and in other government bodies in the, in the city. The residents that the city council represents, they don't have the time to visit, to, to attend every single meeting and listen to everything. And so that's why as much as possible, everything should be televised, streamed, and recorded. And shout out to Ricky Velez and all of everyone at Chelsea Community Cable for doing this important work because what they do isn't, it's not just about cable, it's about transparency in government. I have a friend who watches city council meetings while he puts his kids to sleep. I've done the same on multiple occasions, catch up on ZBA meetings or, or school committee meetings, and we wouldn't be able to do that if they weren't streamed. There's no reason that you can't broadcast subcommittees. The school committee broadcasts subcommittees, even if they're only 15 minutes long, it's possible. And there's no reason not to do it if the city council has nothing that they're trying to hide. 
Um, on a separate matter, I also suggest that the council consider um, other things that can make um, the dealings of the city more transparent, especially agendas and minutes. Um, instead of scanning printed copies of agendas and minutes, which aren't searchable, um, you could post ones that are searchable. So if you hit like control F, you can actually easily find something in the meeting minutes because sometimes they're really long. It's hard to read. I can't find what I'm looking for when I'm looking at like past planning board things or ZBA things, you know. Um, you'd be surprised what a difference a small change like that can make for residents who are trying to find information. In addition, voice recognition technology has gotten really good, so it's actually really easy and cheap to do automatic transcriptions. So you could actually transcribe all of the city council voice, like the, the, the audio, and have print, printouts of, or not printouts, but you could put the text of what everyone said in the meeting up on the website, and then you could also you know, it's, it's easier to read something for some people than it is to, to listen to a, a video and go on YouTube and try and find the place where they were talking about the thing. I'd love to see um, all these things, searchable meeting agendas, minutes, full transcriptions, all posted online with streams um, and recordings in a systematic way, not just when the council feels like it. Another thing is that when the documents are searchable in this way, then you can actually copy and paste them into Google Translate. So it even makes it more accessible in that way. All these things can go a long way to making our city government more transparent, and only with transparency can we keep our elected officials accountable and make sure that we are voting for people who are serving the best interests of the community. Not to be dramatic, but one as minute, they say, democracy dies in darkness. <laughs> Thank you. You have one minute left. Thank you. Anyone else like to address the city council? Go on once, twice, next order of business, Mr. Clark. Let's see, the next order of business, who made a minute? To take a motion for the approval of the minutes. Communications from the city manager. First communication from the city manager, notice of residency waiver. Dear councilors, pursuant to the administrative code section 112.02, I'm going to notify you of my intention to hire Mr. Joshua Skordowski uh, Johnson of Swampscott, Massachusetts, for the position of construction project manager in the Department of Public Works and to grant him a waiver from the residency requirement set forth in the administrative code part four, section 112.01. A copy of Mr. Uh, Skorodowski Johnson's resume is attached. There were no Chelsea candidates for this position. Mr. Will, accept and file communication on the suspension of turnover. No objection. No objection. Accept and file under the. The next communication from the city manager notice of residency of waiver. Dear council, as pursuant to an administrative code. 112.02, I'm going to notify you of my intention to hire Mr. Christopher Finn of Linfield, Massachusetts for the position of full-time E911 dispatcher and to grant him a waiver from the residency requirement set forth in Administrative Code Part 4, Section 112.01. A copy of Mr. Finn's resume is attached. Accept and file a communication under suspension if there are no objections. No objections. Accept and file under suspension. Council Robinson. Next communication from the mayor. We have appointments and boards. Dear Council, as pursuant to Section 4 2 of the Charter of the City of Chelsea, I invite to recommend the following individuals to boards and commissions in the city. For reappointment to the Board of Registrars of Voters, Mr. Jacob Resnick, 68 Captain's Road, in the rear Chelsea for a three year term expiring on December 22, 2025. And for appointment to the Community Recreation Advisory Board, Mr. Nicholas Valentine, 26 Tudor Street, Chelsea for a three year term expiring in 2025. Will of the council on the appointments. Uh, move to a second reading under suspension. So move to if there a second no reading. Council yes. Robinson. No objection. And the last communication from the city manager request for appropriation of overlay surplus to the assessor's department. Dear council, as I am writing to request that the city council approve a transfer of funds totaling $83,000 from the overlay surplus account to the assessor's department in order to pay for outside consultant assistance in that office. For specifically, the assessors are seeking outside help for three projects. The 
the updated valuation of commercial properties focusing on retail and office space, GIS mapping work and personal property valuation and industry specific personal property valuation reviews. Each of these tasks will require not just expertise, but a time commitment that would tax our existing staff. The Board of Assessors has determined that it has $83,000 in surplus in its overlay reserve account for these purposes. For your information, the overlay Mr. reserve President? account is the account from which Councilor Damale. I ask that we waive the rest of the reading and that there's something coming up under new business. Um, yep. This, yeah. Okay. Except and file under suspension. If something no coming up on the new business. The order. Okay. Uh, move on to new business. New business. Same we, order. We have an order introduced by Councilor Robinson. Ordered that the Chelsea City Council authorize the appropriation of $83,000 from the overlay surplus account to the following assessor department, FY23 expense accounts. Other professional services, $53,000. Data processing services account, $10,000. Appraisal services account, $20,000. What's the will of the council? Council uh, work. Move to a second reading uh, on the suspension if there are no objections. Second reading, so waived. Next order introduced by Councilor Cupero. Request that the city manager, Thomas G. Ampersino, look into homeowner occupied units to be offered 10% of their water bill for one unit, two units, three units, four units, and all condos. What's the will of the council? Council work recognize the Cupero. Accept and file and. Accept and file the communication. He wants to send, send it to the conference. Yeah. Which conference you want to send it to? Committee of the whole. Subcommittee? Subcommittee and conference. conference yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, Next order request. introduced by Councilor Cooper, and I'll signed on by all the councilors here. Uh, home rule petition. Whereas homeowners in the city of Chelsea have been burdened with high sewer and water rates due to escalating MWRA charges. Mm -hmm and the need to upgrade obsolete water and sewer infrastructure in the city, whereas the economic impacts of COVID pandemic have exacerbated financial pressures on Chelsea homeowners, whereas a program providing for rate relief to homeowners similar to the residential exemption provided to taxpayers with these will ease these financial constraints. Now therefore be it ordered by the City Council of the City of Chelsea as follows. That a petition to the General Court accompanied by a bill for Special law relating to this. Council Recupero make a motion waive to the waive rest the, of the reading. reading and move waive to the, the reading. Uh, accept and file and send it to conference. Okay. Move it to conference. Yep. You want to schedule public hearing? You, yeah, public hearing. And uh, can I speak on it? Yes, you may. Ma'am. Us counselors here are trying to help the homeowners that are here and also the tenants. This, after we have a public speaking portion of it, will go to the State House. They are the ones that will determine if we are allowed to do so or if we are not allowed to do so. So, I hope that we will be probably the first in the state to put something like this forth. And it's a good thing for Chelsea to be the first. Should, because we try, all the counselors up here try very hard to give homeowners and residents to believe that we are helping all of them, and we do help all of them. And I hope that maybe the state reps and the state senators will allow us to give homeowners a small percentage on the water, because they do it for residential exemption. So I don't see why they wouldn't try to do it at least for the water to help up, because water bill is like a mortgage. In our city, the water bill is very high. So if we can help out the homeowners and in return, the homeowners will help out the tenants because the tenants are the ones in the final outcome that will pay. So if we can help out them, and I hope we're able to, it'll be a good thing to say that at least the city councils in the city of Chelsea are trying. And I hope we succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Anyone else want to speak on the motion? Home rule petition. Okay. 
Next order, order introduced by Councilor Cooper, requests the city manager, Tom Ampacino, verifies that the employees from 311 are working either remotely or at business office. Accept, I'd like to accept and file the communication, I'd like to speak on it. Okay. Adopt that under suspension. Huh? Adopt that under suspension. Adopt under suspension. Um, the 311 seems to be a lot of complaints. They call, it goes to a recorded message. There's three people that are working in this office. I don't understand why it goes to a recorded message. People have complained to me about it and I called myself and the thing went right to a recorded message. So, and we should at least see how these people, we got a communication from the city manager saying that one of these persons there is working remotely from home because she's pregnant. That's fine. But I mean, who supervises these people? It's supposed to be DPW. How, how, who supervises them? How do they go? You know, I really don't understand how you have three people and a machine goes to an answering machine. I didn't, I didn't know myself until someone called me and then I tried it and that's what it did. So now, I would like maybe later on the city manager can en enhance our view of how these people operate. And there should always be someone there manning these phones. Otherwise, what is the point of 311? What do we need them for? We don't need them. If that's the case, thank you. Anyone else like to speak on Councilor Lopez? Yes, uh, I also have some complaints to that. 11. Uh, when someone calls, and if that person doesn't speak Spanish, uh, they don't try to talk in Spanish to the people. Also, the, the phone calls go to an answer machine, and they say no one answers. So I, you know, I uh, thank uh, Councilor Recupero for bringing this up, that uh, you know, there's some answers to be, you know, give to a community, the people who call. Now we got a problem with this mattresses and all that stuff. We're gonna get, they're gonna get more calls. So if they didn't answer before, how they're gonna answer with all these calls for the mattresses? Thank you. Okay, anyone? Councilor Taylor. So I'd just like to say that I also received a lot of complaints about 311. And the 311 from, from my perspective as a counselor, getting feedback from the community that it isn't working. I understand it works better for the city uh, than to click it uh, and fix it because, you know, there's, there's lots of things that, but, but you know, what I'm getting is, is that they, the, the community was much more um, happy with that old system, even though it's a pain for the for the for the city to kind of close out these these tickets or whatever it is, um, but but really, some improvement needs to be made on the three one one if we're going to stick with this system. Otherwise, I think we need to figure out something else because this is not just complaining up here. This is real um, feedback coming from the community, and you know you guys need to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other council like to speak on it, Madam? Council Vito. Um, I haven't gotten any complaints, but I, I have heard, you know, some buzzing um, in the past. I just think that this may be worth going to a subcommittee on conference and maybe talking about what some of those hiccups are. It's okay if it's not working. Let's highlight what the issues are and how do we move forward so we can get it so we can work. Because I do think that, you know, if, if there's, there's an immediate situation that, like, there's a mattress in the middle of the floor or, or, or there's, there's a, something going on in the city where someone needs to report it, um, we can't expect to go to the different departments because they're going to be tied up with whatever responsibilities they have that day. So I think that it does bring value, but I think it might be worth going to a subcommittee on conference to, to discuss how we can you know, work, out the, work out the kinks. Thank you, Councillor. Any other councillor like to speak on the 311 remotely? Okay. Next order, Next introduced by Councilor Vito, ordered that a subcommittee on conference be held with the CCTV IT city manager to discuss the streaming of all city council subcommittee. subcommittee. 
Furthermore, to discuss building capacity and allow for remote meetings to promote civic engagement and meet demand. <coughs> Council Vito. I move that we adopt unanimously under suspension if there are no objections, and I'd like to briefly speak on it, please. See no objection, you can speak. You have Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, it, 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 respect with, with what the, what the residents spoke earlier about transparency. Since I've been on the council, I made sure to make that a lot of these city council meetings were publicized on Facebook, on social media, and I respect and appreciate the city manager's support in hiring folks to support the social media. We fix up the website. We really have done all we can to get information out there. The pandemic really, really was, was, a hard, was a hard situation to navigate through when people couldn't come in and folks were remote and trying to accommodate the boards while still trying to remain safe and, and alive. And so I just think that somewhere we lost the essence of what we were supposed to be doing. Some of the decisions that, are, a lot of the work happens in subcommittee meetings. And a lot of folks are only seeing us live on TV, hi there. Um, because th that's how it works. But I believe that subcommittees should not be, the, the streaming of subcommittees should not be at the discretion of the chairman. I think it should be flat and something that we just do so we can allow other people to see what's going on behind the doors. I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything sinister or, or inappropriate, but I just think that the community at large does better when they see all the conversations that are happening behind the scenes so we can be open and transparent about what's going on in local government. It's 2023, there are so many ways in which we can do this. So what I want us to do is have a meeting and to discuss with IT, the city manager, and figure out what he's willing to invest. And my, my, my experience with the city manager tells me that he's all about transparency and that he's gonna be on board with this. I, I, I don't think that's wishful thinking. <laughs> um, and so what I hope is for us to decide what meetings are we streaming? Are we gonna stream them all? If we're going to do that, what does that look like for IT? Because we also have orders where we're streaming ZBA planning, and those things should also not go unnoticed. Do we need to set specific days where we have all subcommittee meetings to make sure that it's always, um, that it's happening here, that we have the capacity to be able to record it? Those, those ty types of things. And secondly, I also think that we need to talk about building infrastructure about how we can potentially have remote meetings um, and allow someone who may be ill to participate in their role because in the past that has not been offered to me. I was out for a long time because of my health, fighting for my life, and I would lo have loved to have been able to join remotely, but the previous chairman did not allow that. And so I, I commend you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for allowing, for allowing uh, Councilor, District 5 Councilor the other day to, to join. And I think it's something we need to move forward and perfect, but because there's so many hiccups with electronics, I think it's worth a conversation with Ramon and IT to figure out exactly how we make that happen and, and how, how we just bring civic, people want to know what's going on, but people are boggled down with two, three jobs, they're tired, the meetings sometimes go on too late, and they shouldn't have to miss out on decisions that are being made that affect them simply because they can't be here. And I think because we have the capacity, what does that mean for these different departments and how do we work together to make sure that we're bringing local government to the people because the people do want to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Anyone else like to speak on? Council Taylor. So I couldn't agree more with Councilor Vidot and this, um, this order. Um, <clears throat> All levels of government should have integrity and transparency. Um, and I think the more we can stream so that the people at home can not only see what's going on, but then they can actually take part in the public discourse that comes out of these meetings, okay? so that the decisions aren't really just being made by a privileged few who know what's going on. And, and, and too, too many times this happens in this city when uh, a, a certain clique of people want to do something and they just arrange for it behind the scenes and it just goes through. So what I, what I really would like to see done is 
have as much uh, uh, video streaming of, of all the proceedings, like Councillor Vado had said, so that people can actually figure out what is going on and what they want to go on. Because for some of us up here who, who desperately try to engage the public on things, it's hard because they really don't, they really don't know. And we need to change that. We need to be a better government. And I think, I think this is one of the key ways that we can, uh, you know, if, if they can see what we're all discussing, they can be a part of it. They can form an opinion. They can, they can then call us up and say, hey, you know what? I agreed with this counselor on X, Y, and Z. How do we get this done? Or whatever. That's, what, that's really what good government should be. And so um, I would ask all my colleagues here to support, um, support this in, uh, in the conference and, and talk about ways to expand what we already have. And with, with all the leftover money that we have in the budget, uh, shouldn't be any problem trying to do that. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Council Garcia. I'm sorry. Thank you, um, Council. I am in total agreement. I honestly thought that the subcommittee meetings were automatically recorded. I had no idea they weren't. But um, I think that we should definitely take into consideration and looking at how the school committee um, does their subcommittees remotely because some of the subcommittee meetings are 15 minute long um, meetings. And you know, we, we're all very busy, but the work still needs to get done. And some of us can't make it. I also have a, an autoimmune deficiency disorder. Um, but you know, the time and day that I, I cannot make it, I would like to be part of it, right? Um, so I think that we should definitely look at how the school committee portrays themselves and structures themselves, and we have a lot to learn from them, honestly. I'm very, very proud of how the school committee um, you know, is, is completely transparent and is accessible through Zoom. So I think it's something that we should consider. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Recupero? I couldn't agree more. Our government, I think, needs to be more transparent. They need to see more and more what we actually do, what the people that represent them actually do for them, to understand, because sometimes I don't understand. Something slips by me, you know, and I can't figure it out myself sometimes how it is. So I don't think all of us here really understand every little piece that's involved, but it should be more transparent and to actually see what we do. And then the people can ask us questions like counselor said, can ask us and can determine what do the counselors do for them? Why, you know what I mean? This is the greatest thing. I think it's a good thing for them to understand what we actually do here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council would like to speak on the matter of request? Council of Vegas. I think that this is extremely important for us to be fully transparent and I do think that it would support our community to be more civically engaged and um, I also think that it would support us working better as a united front because it would hold us accountable. So I, I love that idea. Um, so I am in complete support of this. I think that it would bring inclusivity as well and like my um, sister, Miss Tamari Garcia mi prima, perdón, mi prima, mi prima, whatever both um, stated. I do think that the school committee runs their meetings extremely effective, and I think we can learn from them in, with respect to that. Um, so, yeah, I'm all for it. Any other council I'd like to speak that have not spoken on the matter of the subcommittee request? Oh, Reg, okay. That's all our business, that's it? That's it. Oh, hold on. Yes, I'm sorry, we're gonna do some public announcements and we're gonna do a few of them. Yeah, those are live, we'll do those live.
Public announcement. Council Vito had her hand up first. Yes. Um, I have brought this up so many times, Mr. Ambrosino. But when we have public meetings that start at 6 and the doors are locked, the handicapped entrance doors are locked, we are telling disabled people, elder people, or folks who function differently that they are not welcome in city government. And I know that you're tired of hearing this. I know we've had uh, personnel shifts in the DPW department. I understand. But it is, it is completely ridiculous that we cannot get it together. The door should be open maybe 15 minutes before a meeting, but there's no reason for me to have to chip my pretty little nails banging on the door for someone to come and open the door. We are a public entity. We provide a public service, and the public is always welcome to attend, but we're sending the wrong message, and I'm really getting tired of having to say that over and over. Thank you. Anyone else? Council of Vegas? Today marks 22 years of my grandmother, our grandmother's passing. Um, so, mi querida vieja, um, una mujer amable, fuerte, una guerrera. No hay un día que pasa que no pienso en ti. Y aunque me trae tristeza en pensar que no estás aquí y y te fuiste en un tiempo suma, en una edad sumamente joven al igual me, me trae mucha alegría en pensar en tus frutos como como mi querida madre um, mis mis primas y, y yo um, I love you te amo and today we celebrate you counselors anyone else got public announcement that uh, sorry that's here no problem um, I just wanted to mention it's freezing out, and I went to go pick up my son last week and saw a little girl in shorts with no socks. And no one did anything, absolutely anything, not the teacher, not anyone. So um, I just want us to be a little humane and sometimes just look and, and feel the need and, and help out. You know, we're not... Um, it's just, it's horrible to think that a little girl is out there with, you know, cold. Um, so my sister and I have started a cold drive. We've already started collecting. And I'm literally going to stand out in the school to see if whoever needs a jacket. <laughs> so whoever has a clean, nice jacket hanging around, we will be collecting them. Um, my number is public. Just give me a call. I'll pick them up if I have to. But there is a need out there, and, and I think that we have to be more proactive with our children. So. Thank you for that cause. Uh, I have a few announcements. Councilor Taylor, an announcement. <clears throat> so this Thursday, December 8th, the Chelsea Rotary will be outside of Market Basket ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. So if you'd like to come by and uh, give a little something for, uh, uh, for our local uh, Salvation Army, um, who actually has a new major. So uh, not, not just a captain, but a major. So uh, come, on, come on down to Market Basket. Uh, 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 on uh, Thursday and give a little something to uh, the Red Kettle. Thank you. Counselor, do you have a time on that Thursday? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's all day. I think it's all day uh, at least until um, it's at least until 2 o'clock and I, I can't remember if, if it goes till 4 or not. But, so but, it's uh, a.m. to uh, yeah, nine eight, starting at 9 a.m. Okay. Uh, F folks need to know each other. Counselor Lopez. <laughs> I'm going to sign it, right? No, I'm going to do the announcements. Got a few announcements. Oh, no. Okay. No announcements. Thank you. A uh, few announcements. Tomorrow we have a subcommittee meeting on speed bumps. Um, so for all the counselors who's going to attend, please attend. Tomorrow we'll be here at 6 o'clock. Please be here. Um, following week we would have, on the 12th, special meeting we will have to have a selection to fill the council at large seat. We have three city councilors who have gotten to the final stage will be um, broadcasting that live, will be asking public questions. 
not the public, but we'll be asking questions from the councils to the um, candidates. They'll be um, introducing themselves and responding to our questions. So that's on December 12th. That would be 630. We also have um, a organizational meeting on the 19th of December. As you know, the city council every year prior to the last meeting, we have an organizational meeting where we make nominations for president and vice president of the upcoming year, which would be 2023. So that meeting will take place on December 19th at 6 p.m. Um, so in this Friday, um, if you're interested, um, City Hall um, Employees Party is um, this Friday. You would have to talk to Human Resource. Tickets are $55. I believe they have a few more tickets, but again, the tickets I believe is last day is tomorrow for that, if you would like to go, okay? Um, now we have moments of silence. Yes, on, Council on, Lopez. On Friday, uh, last Friday, it was uh, December 12th, uh, no. Joe England, who used to live at 109 Marlboro Street, he left the city with his wife oh, a while Teresa. ago, and he passed on, on Friday. He was a member of the CET group, community enhancement team, and also uh, he was part of uh, DPW for a while. So we'll have a moment of silence on his memory. Okay, moment of silence again. Councilor LeCoupero. A moment of silence for Mrs. Lewis of Essex Street. She passed away, and she was a very nice lady. She passed away as a young, she was a young woman and left her husband and a special knee child behind. And uh, thank you. Who oh, has left us 21 years ago today? Deborah? So I also have a moment of silence for a good friend, a longtime Chelsea resident, business owner that passed away, Dickie. Fong, he lived on the corner, actually he lived on your street, on Jones Ave. He passed away, I believe he's 91 years old. He owned the uh, cleaners back in the days here. He worked at the local um, Chinese restaurant. Um, his family's been in Chelsea for a long time. Very good friend, very good um, person. Um, my condolence again to that family and the rest of the families that we've asked him for a moment of silence. Thank you all for being.